Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. So we're continuing a conversation this morning, or rather we are continuing a conversation that definitely is going on throughout the world, talking about HIV. And it's 40 years of HIV right here in TNT, National AIDS Coordinating Committee, is also going to be documenting their achievements. Now in studio with us this morning to share more about this history and where we stand as a nation is Dr. Gregory Boyce, the Deputy Director of the Medical Research Foundation of Trinidad and Tobago, and Cyrus Sylvester, Pair Navigator of the HIV AIDS Coordinating Unit at the Ministry of Health. Good morning, gentlemen, and welcome. Good morning, thank you for having us. It's a pleasure to have both of you with us on the show this morning. I mean, this conversation is not something that has gone Away. Now, admittedly, I dare say, taking a look at history, we saw HIV definitely at the forefront, let's say, in the 80s, 90s. Yes. And then as time went on, it seemed as though it became the norm. We became more familiar Correct. and we continued. And I would like to think it's because so many advancements were made sure. that it became a part of a fabric of our society, but also um, it was it was it's a healing. It's a healing journey, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. So tell us a little bit about the history of HIV in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, Cyrus, perhaps? Okay, for me, mm -hmm. this journey would have started with me 38 years ago. Okay. Now, I've been living with HIV for the past 38 years. Mm -hmm. So I, am, I believe that I am in a position to speak freely about HIV, you know, the 40 years of HIV in Trinidad and Tobago, okay. because I have been living this journey. Mm -hmm. I've been living this journey. I have, you know, from the inception, I have seen the challenges that have brought us to where we are today, right. the challenges and the achievements. I mean, if I am to go back and speak about, you know, what was happening in those early years, and oftentimes when I go back to that place, it takes me to a dark place yeah. because it was, it was not a good time yeah. because I have firsthand witnessed the stigma, the discrimination, the fear, the panic, healthcare providers who were afraid to attend to patients. I had friends who were in the hospital. I remember one person in particular who was at the hospital, and I went to visit him, and he was lying on the bed there, and there was a trail of ants going into his mouth. You know, yeah. I mean, this is the reality of what yeah. was we, we faced back in those days with HIV. Mm -hmm. And uh, as the years rolled, rolled on, 2003, ARVs were introduced into Trinidad and Tobago. Persons were now able to access medication. Mm -hmm. You know, and I saw the advancements and the achievements as, as the years rolled on. Mm -hmm. You know, but it has been a journey, yeah. and it, I'm still living this journey. And I tell persons, I have been here for the past 38 years, living this life, living with HIV. And you can too. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I stand as a pillar of hope. Thank you so much for sharing that. That is so beautiful because, as we mentioned, you know, it's something in the 90s. As you said, there was a lot of stigma attached to it. Mm -hmm. And now to see the advancements that we'd love to discuss with you further, Doctor. Mm -hmm. um, we've been able to live with and remove that phobia. So hats off to you and thank you for sharing that with us. Before it's still with us. It's still with us. Yeah. We need to get to that conversation, but let's mm -hmm. come to you, Doctor. Let's talk sure. about some of the achievements that we've seen medically wise in Trinidad and Tobago. Right, and again, thank you for having us here this morning. So the, the first case of, of HIV would have been uh, diagnosed <coughs> sorry, by Professor Courtney Bartholomew, who mm -hmm. is the founding director of the Medical Research Foundation. Yeah. Um, and that was in 1983, September, two cases he published in the medical literature. And of course, at that time in this country, there was no treatment available, mm -hmm. right? So. In, in, in a very real sense, an HIV diagnosis was, you know, essentially a, 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 a sentence of death, right? Mm -hmm. Now, as time went on and medication became available, we would have piloted at the Medical Research Foundation the first treatment program in the country, along with, I think, um, a site in Tobago, as well, uh, Tobago um, Health Promotion Clinic at San Fernando in 2002. And that made such a transformational difference. So I've been at MRF next year will be 20 years. Oh, right? congratulations. Wonderful. And so I would have started my training pre-availability of, of HIV medication in the country. So <clears throat> working in the hospitals and seeing persons coming in ill, you know, you do a clinical examination and you know. Yeah. Right? And you know you have to give this person some devastating news and there's nothing you can do as a physician at that time to help. And then post-2002, treatment becomes available and you see people advancing, getting well. The medication at that time, were, were rough, right? With a lot of pills, lots of side effects. And as time went on, the medication became better and better, more potent, fewer pills, fewer side effects. And the real, um, um, I, I think, revolution was that you could sustain viral suppression, get the level of virus down to what you call an undetectable level. Right. To the point where when you run your blood through a machine, the machine can't actually pick up significant traces of it. And early on, there was not you know, that much surety as to how long that would last. And as Cyrus is demonstrating in person, yeah. that once you are taking medication <laughs> and you're adherent, you can suppress virus um, indefinitely, remain well, live a, he a healthy, happy life with HIV. So we're now getting to a point where, and in all these conversations about we're hitting our 1990 targets, 
as a country, we are now at, uh, approaching the 95, 95, 95 top targets to get to elimination of HIV as a public health threat in 2030. We're working with lots of stakeholders and um, community organizations that assist and partner with uh, us. So we're a non-governmental organization working in partnership with the government and other stakeholders to uh, get world-class treatment and care for persons living with HIV and get them to that point where they understand you're going to be fine. Yeah, that's yeah. so important, understanding you're going to be fine. Now, we don't have a lot of time, sure. but we definitely want to get to the conversation of the fact that the phobia still exists, because mm. this is something that by now, especially with what you've just shared and what you've lived through, we yes. would expect has been allayed in some form or fashion. So let's talk a little bit briefly about this phobia still existing and what we can do to stop it. it. It is unfortunate that stigma and discrimination, you know, still exists, but, you know, it will always be with us. Right. But, you know, the media has a major role to play, all stakeholders, with respect to, you know, dispelling stigma and discrimination, breaking down stigma and discrimination. And as a result of the stigma and discrimination, you know, persons face, persons are fearful to come out. There right. are so many persons who are living with HIV in Trinidad and Tobago. The last estimate put us as, at between... 11 to 15,000 persons living with mm -hmm. HIV, mm -hmm. and how many persons are publicly standing up and say that I'm HIV positive? Yeah. Persons are afraid to come forward, and it is because of that same stigma and discrimination. Um, even in the workplace, and we have to say thank God for the um, the HIV workplace policy that is advocating that persons who are HIV positive cannot be dismissed from their jobs for being HIV positive, mm -hmm. and that HIV should not be mandatory, you know, for employment. Yeah. But stakeholders, the conversation has to continue. Mm -hmm. um, again, it is unfortunate because in the very early years of HIV, there was a lot of conversation surrounding HIV, and you would have said this in your introduction. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of conversation surrounding HIV, a lot of awareness, mm -hmm. and that has gone lull. Yes. You know, it's almost, the conversation is not happening anymore, mm -hmm. but we need to bring back the conversation because HIV will continue to be with us. Right, that's yeah. something that's so important, bringing back the conversation yes. as well, because it does sort of go to the back of your minds, but in many ways, you say, like some people say, no, well, they're not that serious. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes Sometimes that's, uh, in, in many ways, I mean, yes, don't get me wrong, it is, of course, serious, your immune system, your health, mm -hmm. but in many ways, at least for me, where I sit, and this is where I learned something new today, I thought, well, we're all, we're good now, yes. you know, and we, we're not sitting in this phobia state of mind, essentially, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it doesn't change how you operate. So much so that there are some persons who are saying HIV, oh, if I get HIV, there's medication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, to think that maybe 10, 20 years ago, people wouldn't have thought like that in any way whatsoever. Yeah. And this is why it's so important that we document the achievements yep. of um, HIV in particular, of the research that's been done. How mm. important would you say it is, doctor, um, mm. at the MRFTT and of course globally to document these achievements and why are we doing it now in Trinidad? Right. So I think it's important for us to document these things just so that we do not lose that memory that, that, yeah. that Cyrus again is mm -hmm. spotting. So in terms of what we've done that's worked, what we've done maybe didn't work so well in our context, we need to make sure that we have local answers to local problems, yes. right? HIV is a global issue, but every in instance is, is, is different, right? We just celebrate the persons who have done so well to, to, to help us get to the point where we need to get to. We need to also ensure that there is transfer of knowledge, that, that the things we learn don't fade into in into uh, in, in, out, out of out of memory. So, for example, there's always that thing about what we the research is done. We get this great finding, and then it doesn't translate into clinical practice. Mm -hmm. So, the benefit of all that extended research doesn't um, get get moved on. Agreed. Now, um, gentlemen, before we, um, well, we'll close this conversation for now, but I think it would be lovely to have both of you back to continue this Definitely. conversation and start to raise that awareness. Let's talk about the importance of community in particular mm -hmm. when it comes to the HIV awareness and response in general. Cyrus, we can start with you. All right. We have to appreciate that there are lots of persons who belong to key populations, mm -hmm. um, such as sex workers, men who have sex with men, migrants, uh, um, young boys and girls, uh, even persons living with HIV. And it is oftentimes because of the stigma and discrimination that they face, they are afraid to access, you know, yeah. healthcare in the public system. And for this reason, this is, this is why it is important that community groups uh, be on board to bridge that gap in providing services targeted specifically for these communities. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And doctor? Yeah, so. Absolutely. I mean, he, he said, I would actually say it's foundational the involvement of community groups into um, treatment and care because for, for, for some persons with HIV who are suffering from stigma, the community groups are the community are the last people, the last family you have. Yeah. And they're the persons who will navigate them to care, make sure that there's someone checking in on them, give them that care and support. Because the medication can only go so far. The person must feel as though I am surviving, not just surviving, I'm winning. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm prospering, I'm thriving, and the role of the community groups is absolutely critical to that. 
It is. It is so important. Community is important. Gentlemen, I really hope we can have you both back on the show soon because yes. we need to continue this conversation. Um, Trinidad Tobago and the world who are watching right now, we're talking about, of course, 40 years of HIV and what is taking place, not just here, but throughout the world, and more, how we can do our part to continue to raise awareness and remove any stigma. And Dr. Gregory Boyce, Deputy Director, joined us this morning along with Cyrus Sylvester, Pay It Navigate. So remember, of course, there are helplines that you can call. I'm going to share some of them with you now. 800 for hiv that's your HIV help Helpline, National Domestic Violence Hotline 800-SAVE, Children's Authority Hotline 996 or 800-2014, and Childline 131 or 800-4321. This is the Now Morning Show. Your birthdays are coming up in a few moments, so stay tuned. We'll be back in a few.